Hello and welcome to Cheshire Audio. Now what I'm going to do today, I'm going to do a, a bit of a beginner's guide to connecting up a record player. Um, a lot of people are coming back into it now and some, for some people it's the first time they've actually connected a record player to anything and it's not the same as connecting a CD player, radio, tape, streamer, TV. It's not the same as connecting one of those. You need you need certain, certain things to be in place before it'll actually work. So I'm just going to run through that. Um, I'm going to use a Riga Planer 1 because obviously we're Riga dealers, we do quite a lot with Riga as a sort of a, an example, but this kind of will work with any any record player really. We'll, we'll go through, if there's any any slight differences, we'll go through that as we as we do the video. So hope this is going to be of some help. I'll reposition the camera and uh, let's go. Right, here we go. This is a uh, record player. I'll put an amplifier here as well. This is the uh, Riga Planer 1. Um, I'm using this because this seems to be the one that everybody is, everybody's buying at the moment. It's uh, been extremely popular uh, as a, a sort of people are rekindling their interest in the vinyl or people are getting into it for the first time as well. Um, and the reason I'm doing the video mainly is because people are sort of trying to connect record players into things where they're not immediately sort of compatible, but, but, but it, they can be made compatible. So we're just going to go through that. Generally on an amplifier, uh, you'll find sort of a proper sort of hi-fi amplifier or have different inputs so you can switch between what you're listening to and you've got a volume control. Um, now this one says, the left hand side says phono, it's also got line one, line two, line three, line four, so there's five inputs on here, one of them is record player. Line one, line two, etc. might be also other amplifiers, sometimes would perhaps label it as auxiliary one, you might have CD tuner tape player, <laughs> still nowadays you still get tape player. Um, we should actually be making a comeback as well, because actually making a comeback. Um, so, but the, what you will find is that the these four are all the same. You can you can connect the CD player into the tape player, input the tape player into a tuner input. They're, they're all, they all work at what they call line level. Record player is different, it's much, much quieter. So if your amplifier doesn't have a phono input, it's not really going to work. It's you'll get sound out of it, but the uh, the volume level will be very very low, and not really usable. So, um, so you need to ensure you've got a phono input. If you haven't got a phono input, then there is not there are alternatives. I mean, Riga do a little box called um, the Mini Phono, uh, which is one of these. And um, what you do with this is you connect in the record player to one of these inputs, and the output then goes into the amplifier, and that replace the that creates a phono input, so any of these line inputs then can be used as a phono input. So this this will amplify amplify this this signal more and equalise it. Um, so it will give a similar output to say a CD player or a, a radio. Um, so that, basically, you can use this with anything that's got an auxiliary input on it and or a line input on it. So if you want to connect it to a Sonus system or to a soundbar or Pretty much anything, a mini system that's got an auxiliary input on it, uh, or even a full full size stereo amplifier that just doesn't have a phono input, because that's quite common. Because they were actually sort of dropped off, because uh, it's quite an expensive circuit to fit in. I mean, the the, the, the inbuilt circuit on this particular model is an, an extra couple of hundred pounds just to have the phono circuit in it. So it's not it's not a it's not a sort of uh, budget thing at all. Um, this little box is about £100. You can, there are cheaper options than that, but the Riga one is particularly good. So, um, so that's what you need if, if you haven't got the phono input. And uh, just to give an idea, setup wise, if you're connecting, on the back of the amplifier, oh, I have to choose something ridiculously heavy just to make it really easy. Right, I'll just connect up the amplifier, so mains lead, uh, rather chunky mains lead, made by a company called Nordost, which is an American company. Uh, our slightly ropey speaker, demonstration speaker cables, which I need re-terminating really, but still work. Which is an Atlas cable, which um, gets a lot of hammer in the demo rooms. Right, so, um, I switch on. Now, just to just to show the situation with, if you connect this into, here, here we've got the phono input, and obviously you connect into a phono input. Sometimes you'll have a, an extra wire on here, for, which is an earth, which we connect into, into here. Um, so you connect black to black to left, red to right, and then if there's an extra wire, you connect in 
Little Earth. Rigas are actually earthed through the negative internally, which is a much better way of doing it, actually. A lot of people complain about the fact they can't see an earth, but it is a better way of doing it. Rigas use, use an internal earth. Um, so that's the normal way you could connect it. But just to sort of show what would happen if you connected a record player to the, an incorrect input. So this is now going into a line input. Um, what I'll do is just put a record on. Now I've got to be careful with playing music on YouTube because you can get yourself sort of, not banned, banned isn't the word really, but you can get yourself sort of uh, deleted if you're not careful. So. Right, so I'm just going to um, just take the cover off the stars, put a record on. So I've got um, just to prove what, what, what an ageing old hippo I am, a bit of caravan in land of grey and pink. Um, start the motor. And play. And the volume's all turned down. Now, so we're connected into a line input here. So this is this is correct, incorrectly connected. So this is the same as if you connected direct into a Sonus or direct into many things, really. Um, so, a bit of volume. Right, that's full volume. I'll turn that down quickly before um, before YouTube notices. Um, if we then connect into the phone input, switch to phone out, volume. Selling cups of tea. There you go. Uh, but that should, that's the extra levels of amplification on that circuit, really. So, like I say, if you haven't got, I'll just stop the record. If you haven't actually got um, a phono input, then you need your little A to D or um, a Project Do One, and there's various actually. If you go on, I should probably shouldn't say this, if you go on eBay, there are some budget sort of phono stages, sort of 40, 50 quid. Uh, you might find they're a bit noisy and a bit poor, to be honest, but um, it depends what you're connecting to and it depends how fussy you are, really. But um, this, is a really, this is a particularly good product, this one, and I've lost the lead to connect it with, um, so I'll just do a quick edit while I go and find the lead. Right, so what we'll do is disconnect this. This is so if you've not got a phone input, you've got an amplifier that hasn't got a phone input, or you've got a Sonus box or a soundbar or anything like I say anything with with just auxiliary on it but no phone no um, record player input. Um, this is how you connect up little phono box. You plug the record there's an input and an output you plug the record player into input and then connect some other lead, which quite often don't come with these, so you have to buy this as a separate thing. Uh, this is an old QBD lead that we've just got kicking about. Now the one place you do not connect this, if you've got an amplifier that has actually got a phono input and you just want to, decided to have an external box, is it, they, quite often they do sound better. If you buy an external box, they do sound better than the internal boxes, um, just by the fact it's a separate thing and it's away from noise or whatever. Uh, what you don't do is connect it into the phono, because this has amplified the signal. Um, and then you plug, if you plug it into that, into the phone input, it then amplifies it again and it sounds horrific. It's just total distortion. Uh, it's amazing how many people do that, because um, they just assume, well, I'll just connect this into the record player. But no, you can connect it then into any of these other inputs. So this is labelled input one, input two, whatever. But it could be labelled as CD, could be labelled as auxiliary, could be labelled as tuner. So let's plug into, plug into that. You also need to power it, so a little power supply, light comes on. You wouldn't normally place them on top like that, it's not too bad actually, but um, sometimes they pick up noise if you put them like that, because record, anything to do with record players is very susceptible to noise, so you're trying to keep things separate, separate if you can. So, turn to the right input, so we're now onto a line input, so we should be able to, I'll just take that down, just a quick blast again. Just to get the YouTube police are listening. So that's going into a line input, but using a, a separate little box. Um, so good to go. Um, yeah, I hope that's helpful. Um, I don't think I've missed anything from that really. But yeah, I think that's it. So um, yeah, I hope this was helpful. If you like what you saw, just give us a like if you want to see even more madness. Um, don't forget to subscribe. I'll uh, I'll put our details at the end of the uh, end of the video. Um, call us about anything really, just if you want to you know, ask any questions, just, just give us a ring. Um, thank you very much. See you again. 
and uh, just a little postscript I forgot to mention when I was uh, doing the video. Um, obviously some record, record player manufacturers do offer versions with built-in Inferno stages. Riga do one, um, Project do them, um, Audio Technica and most of the Japanese brands seem to have a version which will have a built-in Inferno stage. I, te I tend to keep away from that a little bit because um, record players are all about simplicity, the simpler the better. If you want a good, decent sounding record player that's going to last for a long time, keep it simple and keep, you know, put the phono stage on as a separate, a separate item. It will sound better if you do it that way. Uh, it will be more reliable. Um, yeah, that's it really. I just thought I'd add this in at the end just in case I get comments, because I always get comments. So, uh, yeah, so keep it separate. For, separate phono stage sounds better. Stop, it gives you a bit more flexibility if you did then decide to upgrade, which a lot of people have. I've found a lot of people who bought the Riga Planer 1 and, and the, like the Project Essentials off me um, have quite quickly come back to buy something more expensive, not because they were disappointed with what they bought, but because it was so good that they really, really wanted to get more into it and suddenly realised what they'd been missing all these years. So, yeah, there you go. Um, I'm actually going to go now. Thank you very much. See you again. Thank you.